A very, very warm welcome to you and thank you for joining us today, Good Friday, on this CBS special service as we commemorate the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We join Christians all over the world in saying thank you to the Lord for laying down his life for us. My name is Reverend Kwame Rubadiri, and I'll be serving as your moderator today. We have a great service and a great time of worship with this amazing worship team, our CBS worship team. Amen again. Amen. 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 And we'll also be hearing a great word for the season and a special message for today from Reverend Kenny Sige. He is no stranger to CBS. We want to welcome you if you are listening to us on Hope FM, if you're watching on Hope TV or any of our Seatum Church Online platforms. We're here every single Sunday. Today is a special day, but we're so glad you joined us. The hashtag today is hashtag remember me. More about that in the course of the service. But over to Alice and this amazing team. God bless Amen. you guys. Amen. Amen. Happy, Easter. happy Easter. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can text someone and tell them happy Easter. The Lord is risen. And once again, we want to sing and celebrate him because it is because of him that we are here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for the work of the blood, and we honor you. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. I'm going 
gonna praise His name since you are here. I think that you should do the same since we are here. Together let's praise, together let's praise His name because of Jesus. We are here for the last time. Oh, since you are here, I'm gonna praise His name since you are here, my friend. I think that you should do the same since we are here. We came to praise the Lord. Together, let's praise His name because of Jesus. We are here. Oh, all because, all because of Jesus. All because of Jesus. All because of Jesus. We are here because of because of His blessings. All his bountiful blessings we are for the last time. Oh, all because, all because of Jesus, all because of Jesus, all because of Jesus, we are here because, because of his blessings, all his bountiful blessings. you and we've come to you oh God because you died on the cross for we our sake for God the cross, oh thank you for the price you paid God the price that no man could have paid for us God we are grateful Lord and we honor you King of Kings hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to your name you forgave you us all our sins God, God that today we have our testimony God
King of Kings, we bless you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for dying on the cross for us, God. That today we can stand here and have a testimony to give to you, God. That today is because of you, O Lord Jesus. You are wonderful, God. We worship you, King of Kings, God. It is the work of the blood that you shed on the cross for us to have life and to have life everlasting, God. Hallelujah to your name, God. I have a testimony. I don't know what testimony you got to give this very day. Because indeed the Lord has given me a life, life everlasting, forgiveness, or cleansing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, you have rescued us, Lord. As you see me today. Once was lost to sin. I was as good as dead. But the Lord saved me. He said, come. The price has been paid. Your sins are forgiven through my blood. Give you a new name as I set you free. Give me the beats as you see me this very day. Once was lost, lost to see.
and it reaches to the lowest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from in our lives. The blood of Jesus is given power to your life, power to mine that we might be delivered. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we gather before you this morning to say thank you for the power in the blood of the Lamb, the power to save, the power to heal, the power to restore, the power to make complete. Lord God, we come before you with thanksgiving today that Jesus laid down his life for each and every one of us. My God, we're praying for those who find themselves in the valley today, those who find themselves under heavy burdens, oh God, those who find themselves under pressure from every side. In the name of Jesus, that same blood flows to that valley, that same blood flows to that need, that same blood flows to bring up from the valley. Oh God, and we're praying for those for whom life is going well, those who are on the mountaintop. We're praying that even there they will know to seek your face and to cry out for salvation to you because the blood is availed this day for our salvation. Father, in Jesus' name, we bow in humble adoration and thanksgiving for the blood that was poured out for us, for all that was made possible for us at that Good Friday, that Jesus washed away our sins, carried the burden of our sins upon himself so that we may be free free from the power of sin, oh God. We're praying in the name of Jesus that we will also experience healing, healing in our physical bodies, healing in our relationships, uh, healing across our land, oh God, healing around the world uh, because Jesus, you came and laid down your life, uh, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins uh, of the whole world. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, as we commemorate this Good Friday and say thank you for all that Jesus did for us that we are indeed recipients of your blessing. We are recipients of new life and new hope because of what Jesus has done for us. And so we say thank you for all that Jesus has done. And it is because of what Jesus has done that we are here, that we are here to say thank you, here to commemorate your sacrifice and here to live for you, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. It will never, never, ever lose its power. Thank you, worship team. You did a fantastic job. Please put some claps and some emojis of thanksgiving in the chat section. We are so grateful to have had a wonderful time of worship and praise. Well, because it is Good Friday and we have a wonderful message set up for you from our speaker today, we want you to use the hashtag remember me. Hashtag remember me me. In a few moments, we'll be introducing you to our speaker for the day. But once again, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us. And if you're with us for the very first time on CBS, we want to say welcome, feel right at home. There is a word for you. You can type that in the section and even share the link and tell your friends. There's a word for you today. We want to say a special welcome to our good friends and uh, fellow members of Christ is the Answer Ministries in, in Namibia in the United States of America, in Romania, 
and in East Timor. All these countries have a work of Sitam that is now bearing much fruit, and we're grateful to God for what he's doing there. We also want to invite you to subscribe. Uh, please let us know that you are part of what we're doing here in this ministry, and uh, hit the notification bell. It will always remind you that there is a CBS video coming up for your benefit and blessing as well. And uh, please remember to tweet. Those of you who are experts on uh, social media, you can even use uh, the hashtag on Facebook as well or on YouTube. But on Twitter, please use the hashtag remember me. Hashtag remember me. Engage with us, share your thoughts, share your ideas, comment, and even share some prayer requests as well. Today, we'll be welcoming our special speaker of the day, Reverend Kenny Sige, a little bit more about him in a few more moments. He'll be sharing a wonderful lesson about focusing on the wonderful sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Now, as we continue, we have lots to share with you, but please stay with us and hear these messages about our ministry here at CETA. We are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS Family Service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM, or for those of you streaming live on our Sitam Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook, and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion, where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We welcome you to join us on Wednesday for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m., broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM, and on all the Sitem Church online social media platforms. We invite you to send in your prayer requests before and even during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. Planning to get married? We encourage all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly to the Ministry of Health guidelines, so please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. We express our deepest condolences to all who are bereaved. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. We will also conduct the burial service on site according to the current Ministry of Health protocols as well. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitem Church offices are open between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday to Friday, strictly observing all current Ministry of Health protocols. Please remember that all our assemblies around Kenya are open for in-person services. Seating capacity is limited to not more than two-thirds of the capacity of the sanctuary and all other Ministry of Health protocols still apply. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitem Broadcast Service. Thanks for paying attention to these notices. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hello, friends. This is an important year for our nation, Kenya. On the 9th of August, great decisions will be made for the future of this entire nation. From the 1st of May, here at Christ is the Answer Ministries, we will begin a series entitled Church and Politics. And I'd like to encourage you to uh, secure for yourself a copy of the study guide that we will use in our small groups and even in church during the period May and June in preparation for our lives as believers, as Christians who are preparing for the next general election. Please secure for yourself a copy of this study guide. It's only 150 Kenya shillings. It will be available in all of the CETAM assemblies across this country. And we encourage you to use it and to pray for the future of our nation. God bless you. The CETAM Missions Department will be running medical camps from May to September themed Perfecting Health, Radiating His Glory. We invite volunteer medics to register for the medical camp drive according to dates available or preferred mission station. Archers Post, the 9th to the 13th of May. Marsabit, Gororukesa, Matarba, the 7th to the 10th of June. Kargi, the 20th to the 25th of June. Loyangalani, 19th to the 24th of September. Alterot, 26th to the 30th of September. We are currently receiving donations of medical supplies, cash and in-kind for the communities in the various mission stations. 
Partner with us today through the pay bill number 693371. Account Medical Camp or call 0709-861-165 during working hours. Or email missions at sitem.org for registration and inquiry. Donations are receivable in any SITAM assembly near you. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. It's now time to worship God through giving and we're delighted to have the opportunity to say thank you to the Lord with our substance and with our resources. Allow me to just share a, a brief prayer and then you'll watch a clip which will give you more instructions on how you can give for this ministry. Father, in Jesus' name, the greatest gift that any of us have ever received is salvation in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're grateful for everything you've entrusted to us. And we pray, O oh God, that as we give back to you and to the great work you've invited us to partner with, that your blessings will flow to that work and flow from the gifts that we give for your honor and glory. May your blessing be upon every gift and every giver in Jesus' name. Amen. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work even in these trying times as we seek to bring the spread of the virus under control. We believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. For the easy management of our finances, we have established a common payment platform for all our giving irrespective of which assembly you attend and even for our visitors. You can now give via mobile money through the platforms of M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933-934. I repeat, 933-934. For the account name, please indicate the SITAM assembly you attend. And if you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of SITAM, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all the other seat and people numbers remain operational. If you would like to make a direct bank deposit, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. The account name Christ is the Answer Ministries, the Bank Cooperative Bank University Way Branch, account number is 011-280-617-639-03. I repeat, 011-280-617-639-00. The SWIFT code, KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. That is KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering, and every generous material support. God bless you. Well, it's time to hear from the word of the Lord. And today our speaker is no stranger to CBS. Uh, he's the Director for Administration here at Christ is the Answer Ministries, the Reverend Ken Isige. The title of his message is Choices Have Consequences. And on this Good Friday, you will see very, very clearly what he means by that as he takes from the text Luke chapter 23. Please help me welcome to the CBS special service for Good Friday, the Reverend Kenny C. Karibu sana, Rev. Thank you. Thank good, you, Rev. Kwame. Good to have you with us. Thank you for the You've invitation. You've given us an intriguing title. Oh, yes. And we're looking forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. And... Uh, let me just begin by greeting us all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's always such an honor and such a pleasure to be able to minister the Word of God. And uh, I would say more so on a day like this, Good Friday, the day when we celebrate uh, the death of Christ Jesus. And of course, on Sunday, we know that uh, Jesus resurrected three days later. And so just as Rev Kwame has said, I speak to us this Good Friday morning on a message that I've entitled, Choices Have Consequences. Now, the year 2022 is a big year for us in Kenya. In August of this year, we as a nation will be making a choice on those who will be our leaders for the next five years. The choices that we make in August 
uh, that general election will have an impact on my future, will have an impact on all of our futures. In fact, every choice we make has an impact on our lives, not just the choices we make during a general election, the choices we make regarding education, regarding marriage, the person who you'll marry, the choices we make with regard to investment, and almost every other area, the choices that we'll make will have an impact on our future. Someone said that we as individuals, or even as a society, are the sum total of the series of choices that we've made in the past. And our future is predicated on the choices that we make today. Now, the consequences of our choices may be either good or they may be bad. As we celebrate Easter today, I'd like us to reflect on the choices made by two men recorded in the Bible and the implications of their choices upon themselves and by extension, the implications to us today. The account of these two men is narrated in the story of the first Easter, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It is the account of the two thieves that were crucified along Jesus, one on his left and the other on his right. Now, whereas the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is recorded in all four of the gospel accounts, it is only Luke's gospel that narrates the choice by one of these thieves to confess his sins leading to the future that he had in paradise, while the other criminal remained hardened, unrepentant, and unbelieving, eventually dying in his sin. What I'd wish to do today is guide us through this text so that we'll look at the story together and then we'll consider the significance of the story for us today, learning some lessons from that story. So let's pick up the story in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 23. I'd like us to read just a couple of verses from verse 39 to verse 43. And I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible, but I urge you just to follow in the Bible that you have. Luke chapter 23 from verse 39 following. One of the criminals who were hanged there was hurling abuse at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourselves and us. But the other answered and rebuking him said, Do you not even fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Let us bow for prayer together. Our Father, we bow before your presence this day. Indeed, Father, we acknowledge you as Lord and God, creator of the heavens and the earth, the giver of life. We lay our lives before you today, and we ask in the name of Jesus that, Father, as this word goes out this morning, Jehovah God, that, Father, you will take it and use it, Lord, to reach into the lives of all your people. Minister, Lord God, in our hearts, quicken our spirits, to convict hearts, Lord God, so that all who listen, Lord God, may accept your word and the precious gift of God, freely given to us 2,000 years ago on a day like this today, the gift of salvation that came through the death of Christ Jesus. Blessed be your precious and your holy name. And I pray, Lord God, that all will come to the saving knowledge and grace of Christ Jesus, recognizing and repenting of sin and by faith, looking to you for salvation. And so, Lord, may your word strengthen us, may your word challenge us, and may your word build us up, even in faith. We worship you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the story that we've just read can be considered in two parts. The first part is the conversation between the two criminals, and the second part is the response by the Lord. And so what we'll do, we'll just go through each part one by one. Let's just begin with the conversation between the criminals. Now, as the text, as we read the text, we noted that the conversation between the, the two criminals happened 
as Jesus and the two criminals, one on his left and one on his right, hung on the, their respective crosses awaiting certain death. In the gospel according to Mark, chapter 15, verse 25, the text records that it was the third hour when they crucified him, and that is referring to Jesus. This means that Jesus was crucified at about 9 a.m. on a Friday morning, a Friday like this, but about 2,000 years ago. Luke chapter 23, verse 33, gives us a bit more detail. The verse records that when they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. And so from this text, we note that there were three crosses. The cross of Jesus was in the middle, and on his immediate left and on the immediate right were two criminals, men who had broken the law. Now, if you read the accounts in the Gospels according to Matthew and according to Mark, these two criminals are referred to as robbers or thieves. In the book of Mark, chapter 15, verse 7, it narrates that the man named Barabbas had been imprisoned with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the insurrection. And so from this, we see that there was a certain man who was named Barabbas who had been imprisoned with some other criminals, some other insurrectionists, and they had committed murder in an insurrection, that's a revolt or a rebellion, that had happened around that time. This Barabbas is the one who Pontius Pilate, who was the then Roman procurator over Judea, presented to the Jews alongside Jesus, giving them the option for one of them to be released, either Jesus or Barabbas. The Jews, as you and I know at that time, they opted for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be crucified. So it's quite possible that Barabbas was the one who was to be crucified alongside these other two thieves, these are the two criminals. These two thieves may have been co-conspirators with Barabbas. Now, while these two criminals hung there on the cross, one of them had a change of heart and made a choice for Jesus, acknowledging his sin and looking to Jesus for salvation. The repentance of this criminal involved three things, namely, a rebuke, and then secondly, a recognition of sin, and thirdly, a request. I'd like us just to quickly go through those three things, and then we'll proceed with the story, considering the response of Jesus. The first one, of course, was the rebuke from one of the criminals. Verse 39, or maybe just before we read, let me just generally say that one of the key themes in the crucifixion of Jesus is the mocking that he received in Luke chapter 23, verse 39, the text records that one of the criminals who hanged there was hurling abuse at him saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourselves and us. Now, if you look at Matthew chapter 27, verse 44, and Mark chapter 15, verse 32, recorded right there is a litany of those who mocked Jesus. Matthew chapter 27, verse 44 tells us, the robbers who had been crucified with him, were also insulting him with the same words. So apparently, both criminals, the one who was on the left and the one who was on the right, they mocked Jesus at some point. Mark chapter 15 verse 32 says the same thing. It records, Let this Christ, the King of Israel, now come down from the cross so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him, were also insulting him. In the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 35, the text tells us, And the people stood by, looking on, and even the rulers were sneering at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if this is the Christ of God, his chosen one. Verse 36 tells us, The soldiers also mocked him, coming up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourselves. And so we see the criminals mocked him, the soldiers mocked him, and the people mocked him. But something happened to this one criminal's heart after he heard his colleague mock Jesus. 
in Luke chapter 23, verse 40, the text that we read records, but the other answered and rebuking him said, do, not, do you not even fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? So not only did he stop mocking Jesus, but he rebuked his colleague for continuing to do so. Seemingly, he suddenly became conscious of the imminent death that uh, awakened or rather, and, and that awakened the judgment that was to follow. He became alive to this. The second thing regarding his repentance is his recognition of sin. In other words, he recognized his own sin. Notice what Luke chapter 23 verse 41 says. The text says, And we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. That's what this criminal said. He knew that he and his friends were sinners. Notice he said that they deserved what they were getting and they were experiencing a terrible and agonizing, slow and torturous death on the cross. But he actually acknowledges that that kind of death was a just recompense for the life of sin that they had lived. But he also recognized that Jesus was righteous and he affirmed that Jesus had done nothing wrong. The third thing that we see with regard to this criminal that repented is that he made a request to the Lord Jesus. And that's recorded in the book of Luke chapter 23, verse 42. And that text says this, he made a request, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And I'd like us to mark what he said. He said, remember me when you come into your kingdom, not if you come. This is one of the most amazing statements in the Bible. I'd like you just to think about what this criminal was saying in relation to where he was and the image or the picture that he saw of Jesus when he made this statement. At this point, undoubtedly, Jesus was at his lowest state. He had a crown of thorns on his head. His body had been beaten and badly bruised, lacerated from the lashes that he had received from Pontius Pilate's whip. The nails had been hammered into his hands and in his feet. And he was hanging there on the cross, a death sentence that was meted out to only the worst of criminals. The Bible tells us that whosoever hangs on a tree is cursed, cursed of God. But this criminal perceived not with his physical eyes, but I believe by faith, he perceived and recognized Jesus as the king who will come into his kingdom someday in the future. He believed in the resurrection and knew that not only will Jesus resurrect, but that he will rise again as king. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the second part of the story is the response by Jesus to the request of, by, one of, by one of those criminals. And that response is recorded for us in verse 43. And verse 43 says this, the words of Jesus. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. So this is what Jesus responded to this criminal who asked that Jesus remember him. And Jesus, remember, he's at his lowest point, badly bruised, hurting, you know, lying or rather hanging on the cross naked. But Jesus takes time to look at this man and he gives this man a four-part response in that one statement. Let me just quickly mention. Firstly, Jesus gives this man a promise. He tells this man, truly I say to you. And by so saying, Jesus was affirming the certainty of the words which he was speaking to him. It's like how when we make a prayer with deep conviction, we come to the end of the prayer and we say, Amen. It's like we're affirming the things that we have spoken out with certainty. So Jesus was making this man a promise and he wanted to, this man to know the certainty and the veracity of his promise. Secondly, Jesus gives the time frame 
within which this promise would happen. He says, today. And so Jesus tells him, today, this is going to happen. He gives him the time frame within which that promise will be honored. The third thing that Jesus says in that statement, he says that you will be with me. And so he speaks of an intimacy that would happen between the two. And the fourth thing that Jesus mentions is the place that they would be. He says, you will be with me in paradise. Paradise literally meaning perhaps a garden or a park, but a place of beauty, a place of delight, speaks of the abode of God in heaven. Now, right after that, verse 44 tells us that it was just about noon. And so all this account happened between 9 a.m. and about 12 noon, the time when there was conversation that started with the mocking of Jesus, but eventually this one criminal has a change of heart and he repents. Think about the contrasts in the story implied by the choices that these two criminals made. For the one who repented, think about it. In the morning, he was an enemy of the state. But by evening, he was a friend of God. In the morning, he was incarcerated and condemned to a torturous death on the cross. But by evening, he was in paradise, free from all bondage. In the morning, he was faced or rather, he faced the penalty for his crimes. But by evening, he was fellowshipping with the angels. In the morning, he was a child of the devil. But by evening, he was a child of God. Choices, indeed, have consequences. But think again about the other criminal, the one who died in his sin, unrepentant and hard-hearted. In the morning, he, like his colleague, was an enemy of the state. But by evening, he was a permanent enemy of God. In the morning, he was incarcerated and condemned to a torturous death on the cross. But by evening, he was condemned to permanent perdition. In the morning, he faced the penalty of his crimes. But in the evening, by evening, he began an eternal sentence for his sin eternal death and separation from God. In the morning, he was a child of the devil, but by evening, he was condemned to suffer with Satan forever and ever. I say again, beloved of God, choices indeed have consequences. Now, what's the significance of this story to our lives? Every great truth of salvation is presented in this particular story. Firstly, salvation is a sovereign work of God's grace. God is sovereign in saving sinners. Think about this story. We had two criminals. Both of them were facing the death sentence. Both had equal access to Christ. Both of them, they saw and they heard all that happened in the hours that Christ hung on that cross. Both were sinners requiring forgiveness for God. Both were exactly under the very same circumstances. Yet, one died in his sin, hardened, unrepentant, and unbelieving. But the other repented, believed, and cried to Jesus for mercy. And that one was saved. Beloved of God, the cross of Jesus Christ stands as a great divider of men. You're either on one side of the cross or you are on the other side of the cross. And that truth stands for us even here today. I ask you this, on which side of the cross are you? You see, just like at that time when these two criminals hung on the cross, today there are two people who would be listening to this message that I'm sharing. They will sit through the message. They'll hear the exact same sermon. Yet one will repent and will go home and pray a changed man or a changed woman. But another may remain indifferent, hardened, and unbelieving. I challenge you, 
which of these two persons, which of these two are you? The second thing that we draw from this story is this. Salvation is by grace and it is not by works. It's a free gift of God. Think about the works that would have been accredited to this repentant thief. He was a murderer. He was an insurrectionist. He was a blasphemer. He was one who mocked Jesus. That's all the works that would have been attributed to him even as he faced the penalty for the sins and the crimes that he had committed. But by the time he repented and he put his faith in Jesus, he only had a couple of hours to live. But this, despite this happening, indeed, he was saved. Praise the name of the Lord. The third thing, third lesson that we can draw from this story is this. It's never too late to be saved. The issue is the sincerity within, with which one comes to the Lord. And so that as long as one is alive, there is hope. And so you who have been taking time praying for your loved one, don't give up. Keep on praying. As long as there is life, there is hope. I love the way one Bible commentator put it. He put it like this. He said, you see, there's one deathbed conversion in the Bible so that no dying man will despair. But there's only one so that no living man may be presumptuous. Think about it. The choice that we make today concerning Jesus will have eternal consequences, which will either be for our eternal good, or it will be for our detriment. Let me bring this sermon to an end by calling on you and asking you, what choice have you made regarding Jesus Christ's death on the cross? You might be the worst criminal. My brother, it doesn't matter. You might think that you've done some terrible and despicable things in life. It doesn't matter. Jesus, when he hung on that cross, he heard all the insults. He heard all the abuses that were meted to him, even by that one criminal who eventually repented. But the moment that criminal turned and said, remember me, the Lord took him in and embraced him and extended salvation to him by faith. You might even be on your deathbed. Perhaps the doctor has spoken some very chilling words to you and given you a short period by which he tells you you might have some life. And you're wondering whether there could be any good that can come out of your life. Yes, even deathbed experiences are acknowledged by the Lord for salvation to the one who calls on him. But you might also be in the prime of your life. I urge you to consider and give your life to the Lord because the choice that we make regarding Jesus Christ's death on the cross has consequences on us, either for our eternal good or for our eternal condemnation. I'd like to guide you in a prayer. And if you want to give your life to the Lord, just close your eyes and say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you today and I acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for my sin. I ask you to forgive me of my sin today. Accept me as your child and help me to live for you from this day forward. Thank you for hearing my prayer. And thank you for accepting me as Lord and Savior of my life. Help me to live for you from this day forward. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you said that prayer, I want to urge you just to get in touch with us. There'll be some numbers scrolling right at the bottom of the screen. 
Just send us a message or you could give us a call and we'll be able to get in touch with you and guide you on what you ought to do next. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Reverend Sige. That was such an inspiring look at a scene that we take for granted many oh, times. Yes, yes. And, and thank you for putting it in such contrasting uh, perspective for mm. us as well. Mm. That on the very same day, within the very same hour, a choice can go towards eternal life or towards eternal oh, damnation. Yes. Uh, and, and I really appreciate the fact that you, you stress the fact that in the morning, this, this uh, criminal was actually a criminal, paying, yes. paying for his crimes, etc. But by the evening, he was in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving us such a timely Good Friday message. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you so much for being with us today. We have been so blessed uh, by the worship, by this amazing word, Choices have consequences. Please keep tweeting. Our hashtag is remember me. And uh, I pray that you will ask God to remember you. If you haven't given your life to the Lord, as Reverend Seeger said, the numbers on the screen will uh, help you to contact us so that we can help you to uh, solidify that decision to accept Jesus Christ and to begin to grow in uh, faith as well. Well, today is Good Friday and uh, Easter is not over. The story starts with this dark experience of the crucifixion, a very painful crucifixion, but hope given to this uh, uh, criminal who was on the side, crucified at the same time as the Lord Jesus Christ. But Sunday is on the way. And on Sunday, right here on CBS, we will have together a time of great celebration as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please mark your calendars, tell your friends, share the link to this message, and join us at 10 o'clock East African time right here on Hope FM, Hope TV, and on the Sitam Church online platforms. We look forward to celebrating a glorious Easter time together. Thank you for being with us. If you're in a position to stand wherever you are uh, in, as we have the benediction together, I invite you to do so. Uh, if you're unable to, no problem. Just repeat these words with me and let's share together in the words of the grace. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.